post syndromes. And um, good morning with everybody. So there's a, there's three main Parkinson plus syndromes. That would be multiple system atrophy, corticobasal degeneration, and progressive supranuclear palsy. It's important to understand in a pathological level these diseases. The main problem uh, is accumulation alpha synuclein in Parkinson and multiple system atrophy, while corticobasal degeneration and progressive supranuclear palsy, there is a tau protein problem. So it's important to differentiate which type of protein accumulates in these diseases. Not even that, the type of accumulation alpha synuclein protein and tau protein in each of these diseases is different. It's not the same, which is very interesting. The genetics is even more interesting. If you see here, uh, some of the genes of Parkinson's disease, this is the most interesting. The GBA is for the Gaucher disease. So when you are out when you have two GBA mutations, you have this hematological disease, Gaucher. Nevertheless, if you have just one gene, if you're heterozygote for GBA, you have 8% chance of developing Parkinson's disease, which is extremely interesting though. And the other genes that are famous now and study a lot is the LARC2. And the new therapies will try to direct the therapy according to your genes. And also the parking is important for young Parkinson onset. The genes for the Parkinson plus syndromes are less, are less known, uh, but um, the LARC2 and the GBA in a least degree affect multiple system atrophy. And the coenzyme Q2 and the CHC2 is for the multiple system atrophy as well. Well, in the other proteins, the other Parkinson plus syndromes, the tau protein gene plays plays a major role. Uh, we should remember the, that the tau protein aggregates is located on the chromosome 17. So the pathophysiology, something very important that we should remember is we, we have two types of MSA, MSAC and MSAP. So the problem with MSAC is cerebellar atrophy. While in Parkinson disease, sorry, in Parkinsonian MSA, it's like having Parkinson at some degree. You have the generation of the nigris striatum. For the cobasal degeneration, we have to think in as Parkinson, Alzheimer's disease. It's, it's, very, it's, it's similar, but the main problem here is the degeneration of the cortex in the frontal parietal lobes. And the PCP, we have to think it as a disease of the midbrain. The midbrain is the most affected part in PCP. And we see the midbrain atrophy very clearly in the, in the CT scans or, or the MRI. So which is the chief complaint in which you see EMSA is autonomic dysfunction. If we, if we have to choose which is the most concerning symptom or what, what could point us out more clearly to MSA is the autonomic dysfunction. That would be blood pressure, erectile dysfunction, and we are going to talk about that more clearly. The PCP, in the name, in the name we see, it. we think that uh, because it says progressive supranuclear palsy, the main, the main symptom will be that they can look up, right? But that's not the most common symptom. The most common symptom is false. And there's a particular term for PCP when the, the gate is called drunken sailor gate. So imagine that you have a drunken guy in a boat. So the main problem in PCP, they fell a lot, a lot. And corticobasal this generation, like I say, is mainly a behavior problem, but they have another interesting symptoms. So the multiple features, MSA, we have the dystonias, especially in the Parkinsonian type. The most common is the pizza, you know, like the Italian pizza tower. Uh, canto, canto cornea, you see this guy bend forward and the dystonias. In PCP, like I said before, the main problem is the falls, the gait and the, ocul and the ocular findings. You tell them to look up and they can, they have this palsy. 
And CBD has one of the most interesting symptoms of neurology. They have something called alien lymph phenomenon. And I don't know if any of the doctors have, have, have seen or, or know what is alien lymph phenomenon. But it is very interesting. It's like my arm is, is outside my body. It's like I can control my arm. So let's say I have this cell phone here and I like my cell phone, but in alien lymph phenomenon, uh, my arm act like, like his own and just throw things like his own. I can, I can hit somebody and I don't really want to, but my, my limb is like an alien. This is a very, and it's very interesting uh, symptom. Okay, so the autonomic dysfunction is very clearly, you have the erectile dysfunction, the urinary dysfunction and the orthostatic hypotension. Just one second. The cognitive dysfunction in, in cortical vessel degeneration, like I say, is frontal in multiple system atrophy. This is very important. Is you're usually preserving, your mentation is usually preserving MSA. While you can have some pseudo bulbar affect, it's mainly preserved. And in supranuclear palsy, you mainly have a frontal lobe affliction. And when you have a, a problem in the frontal lobe, you have to remember you have the problems in your personality and concentration. He, and I don't know if the doctors know what pseudo bulbar affect, but this is like, uh, is when you're unable to control your emotions. So you, you cry a lot, you, you laugh a lot, that's called so the bulbar affect, and there's a and there's actually a medication for that. We use Nudexta, which is a combination of chloroquine and dextromethorphan. So if you have a patient that is laughing a lot, crying a lot, that's called so the bulbar affect, and we use this medication called Nudexta. It's, it's very interesting. The gate, like I say, this part is very important. So. Are you able to watch this video? Yeah. So this would be the, the gate in Parkinson. You see, you see the, the arms don't sway a lot. When they turn, they turn really slowly. You see. And you see how the posture is bending forward. Well, in MSA, you have the ataxic gait. So when you have ataxic gait, your feet are spread away. You're very imbalanced. And the PCP is the more interesting. Remember, you are bending forward in, in Parkinson, but in, in PCP, you are straight. You have a straight posture and you're quick, quick. So let me say that clearly. So in Parkinson's disease, you're bending forward in your posture, but in PCP, you are straight. And that's why they fail more, because when you're bending forward, you might, you might have a little more balance, but you're straight and they turn really fast. So in Parkinson, they turn really slowly, but in PCP, they turn really fast and that's why they fall so much. Okay. And the diagnostic criteria. So for multiple system atrophy, you have to have the autonomic dysfunction or either Parkinson symptoms or cerebral or the cerebral type. That's called probable, probable MSA. And the possible is if you have the Parkinson of the cerebral types, yeah. one symptom of autonomic dysfunction, and at least one of these symptoms that are mainly are mainly for uh, they're, they're not that important. Is is when we exclude a lot of symptoms and we don't know exactly what the patient has. And I want to remark this very important that all Parkinson plus syndromes are poorly responsive to the levodopa, poorly responsive to levodopa. And I want you to remember this in orthostatic hypotension is always 
you take the you take the blood pressure of the patient standing, and when they get up, if it's less than twenty, it's orthostatic, right? But the criteria in MSA is the decrease in blood pressure have to be more than thirty millimeters of mercury. That's 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 something unique and something that we use in the criteria. So it's very important to remember. Um, for MSA, you have also this probable and possible, you have to have dystonia or one of these two symptoms, uh, the apraxia or the alien limb phenomenon. And this is the explanation of the alien limb phenomenon. As you see, this is the corpus callosum. And the problem is mainly here. I don't know if you can see my arrow, but the problem is in the rostrum or the genu. You remember the, the corpus callosum relay information from one hemisphere to, to the other. And when this is damaged, the information for some reason don't reach the other, the other part of your brain and, and your arm start acting on his own. It's very strange. I saw one patient in a Parkinson clinic with that limb phenomenon. Uh, Dr. Bernard could tell us a story at the end of the presentation, perhaps. And the cultivation of all this generation, uh, me, the, the criteria is long. I don't want to bore you too much. And this is the, the PET scan. And if we want to do, this is mainly supporting for the criteria. But you see in PCP, there's less metabolism in the in the parietofrontal areas. In MSA, we have less activity in the cerebellum and corticobasal and the midbrain, of course, in PCP. And the corticobasal degeneration is a frontal and, and parietal disease as well. And lastly, very important to remember this sign. I don't know if you can see this sign. This is called the hummingbird sign in PCP. So this is the medulla. This is the pons, and this is the midbrain. And if you see this, is very uh, uh, you have a, a very large atrophy here. And here is the mockingbird. You see how similar they are. This is the, called the hummingbird sign. We see it on T1 imaging. And it's mainly for it's mainly supported, but it's is very specific for for PCP. And the hot cross bone sign, you see this cross. This is the generation of the ponto cerebellar fibers. And this is a typical finding of MSA. And if you, and I wanted uh, Dr. Stein to share this. I don't know if you have seen this. I write this paper with Dr. Tao. I could send you to you later. And it's about the treatment of multiple system atrophy. And, and thank you. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Very good. Thank you.